Hey, what's new and exciting? It's Kevin O'Shaughnessy here, and in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about non functional harmony. So, what is non functional harmony? Well, in order to understand non functional harmony, you've got to understand a little bit about functional harmony. So, let me give you a very, very brief speed readers tour of functional harmony. Functional harmony is the way we describe how chords work in a given piece of music. So, take a scale, say the major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, right? If we take, um, let's say, C, okay? Uh, we put this into the key of C. We use the C major scale. We get the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, all right? Now, each one of those letter names can be given a number, a scale degree. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one. Since we have the letter C on both the beginning and the end of this scale, it's not a new note, it's just in a different octave, so we refer to that top C as one again and not eight. Now the chords that are made using the notes from that scale are C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, and B diminished. Those chords can also be given numbers. C would be the one chord, D minor would be the two chord, E minor would be the three chord, and so on. And so there are various combinations in functional harmony, such as the one chord being the, uh, the tonal center of any key, okay? Sort of all roads lead back to the one chord. So uh, you might have chord progressions. You might have heard other artists talking about things like a two, five, one chord progression. So in the key of C, that would be D minor moving to a G chord, which is in the fifth position moving back to the one chord, okay? So I hope that makes a little bit of sense. There are plenty of rules that govern the movement of chords, which chord you go to first and where you end up after that. There are also plenty of exceptions to those rules, which is why we can have centuries of, of music that follows functional harmony and we don't get bored. Um, and as a matter of fact, a lot of rock songs still follow a lot of functional harmony because of course, how did they learn music? By listening to music that came before them, which also uses a lot of these traits. So that's kind of the, the, the speed readers version, as I said, of functional harmony, okay? But in my song, Persistence of Vision, I use a sort of, I use a non-functional harmony. So in other words, I'm not using that kind of combination of chords, that major, minor, minor, major, major. I'm not using that at all. I have a completely different setup for how I've determined which chords I'm gonna use uh, that gives me a little bit more color in this case. So in Persistence of Vision, the first chord is A, but what I do is I actually use almost exclusively major chords throughout the entire song. There isn't a minor chord in it anywhere. And so um, what I do to govern which chords I'm using is I actually take the notes of an A minor scale. So I use A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then I'm back to A again. Those become the roots of the chords that, uh, that are used in the song. So the chords that I use are A major, B major, C major, D major, E major. There is no actual F major in this song. I, I couldn't find a way to really make that fit. That chord really sounded completely weird uh, wherever I tried to put it in there. But I do have another way of getting an, an F natural note into the end of the song, and I'll show you where that is. Uh, and then G major. So all of those chords are major chords, but the roots of those chords are all based in the A minor scale. So this gives me kind of a, a cool color palette to choose from. I'm gonna do this kind of, um, I'd say kind of like DVD commentary style. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the song, and I'll occasionally uh, interject uh, where all the cool parts in the song are. <laughs> These two chords right here are just A major and E major, um, which would fall in the key of A. I'm using actually an A major seven and an E add nine, and that's gonna repeat. Now this is where I start to diverge. I go to G major and then B major. Here 
that lift in the B major chord, it sounds really cool. I'm going to do a descending line of chords, E major, D major, C major, and then B again. Here's the C. And then this build leads us back to a repetition of the main theme. So again, same chords. This is E major to E major, which is gonna be followed up by that same G to B change, and then that descending line of E, C, D, and B. sharp in the B chord that makes that sound so much brighter. And our descending line again, E, D, C, B. And part of the reason why I'm doing that is because the next section, sort of the guitar solo section, I wanted to make a big change but I didn't want it to sound completely alien. So the chords are gonna be C to D, and here it comes. See, now those chords are actually climbing the scale, going from C to D, whereas before they were descending. But by introducing the chords ahead of time, this section sounds really cool, but the, the harmony doesn't sound completely out of place. Now we're gonna climb one more time to E. Now that second chord in the chord progression is one of my favorites. That's an F sharp diminished over E. I'm doing that for two reasons. One, uh, I need to introduce that diminished sound, but I'm also gonna go back to that G major, B major combination in a second, and the F sharp diminished is a great way to do that. Here's our landing on G, it feels really natural. Lift in the B major chord again. You can't tell that's one of my favorite chord progressions. I love that. Back to our descending E, D, C, B change. Very dramatic return to our main theme. Now we go back through our descending lines again. We're going to go D, C, and then we're going to settle on B for sort of an extended cadenza. Now this is where I needed another chord. This is the, the B diminished coming in. And it's the B diminished that finally leads us back to the A, which is where we started in the first place. And by introducing 
the F sharp diminished chord earlier on, that tonality isn't quite as alien. Uh, it shows up in kind of a cool spot earlier in the song, and so when I use it in a different function here, it actually makes a certain amount of sense. Now, part of the reason why I needed that chord in there was, as I said, I had a hard time getting an F major chord to sound like it belonged in here. That chord just sounded funky. It didn't work no matter where I put it. Um, but, uh, but I really wanted to use all of, I wanted to at least get all of the notes of the A minor scale in there. And so the B diminished chord is made up of B, D, and F. So between those two diminished chords, the F sharp diminished, which was F sharp, A, and C, uh, and this one, B, D, and F, I managed to get all of the notes of an F major chord in the tune without actually putting them all together. Is it nerdy? Hell yeah, it's nerdy. It's really musical nerdy, but um, when it comes to uh, things like being musical or being creative in, in the music, I don't tend to want to beat people over the head with odd time signature changes or things like that. I find my creativity and the fun of writing music in sort of um, just hiding these little Easter eggs in there, not necessarily for anybody else to find, but for me to, to play. That's For me, that's what's m uh, a lot more fun about writing music. So. Um, I've, I think non-functional harmony is a great way to get some cool new colors if you happen to write music uh, yourself. Um, but I do think that it's a good idea to have some sort of, uh, some way of kind of reining it in. Uh, so like I said, I chose the notes of the A minor scale to base all of these major chords on. Uh, you could obviously just grab whatever chords you want and that would be cool. It would give you a really quirky sort of very, um, uh, disconnected kind of sound and if that's what you're trying to express that's a great way to do it. I did want something that sounded uh, very coherent, very beautiful, so I, I chose my chords and my progressions very carefully. So I hope you found that entertaining and useful. If you did, please subscribe, hit the notifications bell so that you can get a heads up whenever I release new content. And in the meantime, I'm Kevin O'Shaughnessy and I'll see you in the next video.